but you're also one of the few people that played uh, on a team owned by Ron, uh, uh, Donald Sterling and Robert Sarver. So I got a, That's I, got, I, got, I got a question for you. There's, he said, I got a way of finding it. <laughs> 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 so we're going to play a little game, but first I want to ask if you had to go out and just have a, a, a night out with Robert Sarver or Donald Sterling, there are only two doors he had to do. Who would you choose? Oh, Donald Sterling, maybe a little bit I creepy. Probably just not, I, you got to go. You got to choose one. I, I, I probably just wouldn't go, Dylan. <laughs> um, if I had to choose one, I don't know. Sarver, I never had no issues with either of them while I was with her. And I never had no issue with Sterling the whole time, to be honest with you. Like when that shit came up, I'm like, my motherfucking high school is almost burned down by the KKK. I'm not worried about what this old ass man is saying. Um, I had a problem with uh, um Sarver after I left because mm-hmm. he said some slick shit to one of my homies on the team and they literally told me right after I'm not going to give his name away but they told me so I didn't have a problem with Sarver there uh, to answer the question I would probably uh, I would go with Sterling just because I really don't fuck with Sarver have you guys read have really you, have you got, shout out to Baxter Holmes who follows the page and he broke that Sun story have you like read or seen some of the things that the people within the Suns organization like hundreds of people said that Sarver did I can see the. I never personally saw mm. those type of actions, but he's out there. He's loud. He always has to be the the, the center of attention at, at events. He's like, he's like rat boy entitled like energy and like nothing. You know, whatever he does, just goes. You know what I mean? So when I when I heard right. what they said he did, I'm just like, I can only imagine. Are you guys cool with playing a little game and me reading off some of the things that confirmed he did? <laughs> Sure. All right. We can play say what is day. it true or false? No, so so so, so we're going to play a game. No, I mean all these things are true. Like these happen like this right. is what people say. Do you guys know the blind rank game? Have you seen those know. videos? So That sounds like So there's there's seven things that he that he did and without knowing what the next one was, we're going to play a game. Matt, you're the owner of the Suns and this is if somebody within your organization did this from 1 to 7. One being the most fireable offense, seven being <laughs> let it slide. You got to rank them one yeah. to seven. All right. Okay. So we're going to start okay. off. Robert Sarver, uh, there was a team meeting and he passed around a picture of his wife in a bikini to all the employees and talking about times where his wife performed oral sex on him. So would that be one to seven? Where, where are you putting that? That's just weird. Um, I'm going to give that. I'm going to put that in the middle. Let me give that a four. Okay. Um, That's right. During Lamarcus Aldridge's during Lamarcus Aldridge's free agency meeting in 2015 with the Suns, the team knew that Aldridge had young children in Texas and that playing near his children was a priority for him. Sarver remarked to two basketball operations staffers that the Suns needed to have local strippers impregnated by NBA players so those players would have children in the Phoenix area and feel obliged to be closer to them. Um, five. Because I, I have a feeling some shit's coming, so I'm, I, I don't. I want to leave. I want to leave the top open. Good choice. Know, that's just weird. Like both those are weird. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Taylor Griffin, Blake Griffin's brother, was uh, in the weight room. He didn't have that much hair on his legs. And Sarver <laughs> asked if he uh, shaved his legs. Griffin said yes, and then Sarver asked him if he shaved his balls too. I feel like that's fair. That's the least. That's, yeah. you know, that's fair. I mean, you can get yeah. away with that, considering yeah. all this that's other weirdo ish. Yeah. Like, I feel like he can get a, he can let that slide. That's get that one to seven. Yeah, six. six yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, this is bad. This one's <clears throat> bad. Um, Twenty thirteen, he uh, hired Lindsay. They fired uh, Alvin Gentry. This is in twenty thirteen, and everyone thought they were going to hire Dan Marley, who was like with the organization for a while really good player. Mm -hmm. They hired Lindsey Hunter over him, also a former player, but inexperienced. And Sarver's rationale for hiring Hunter over Marley was that these N-words need an N-word. And he didn't abbreviate it. Yeah. There you go. Show Mm. your two colors. Uh, Mm. Let me get that number. Mm. Let me give you that. Let me give that. Let me give that. Ah. I want to give it a two, but that's fucking crazy. So I'm going to give it a one. I think that might be one. Uh, 
he uh, the the Suns needed to really like find their future face of the franchise. The GM Ryan McDonough at the time wasn't uh, finding much success. Uh, Diana, he was a mess. He was young too. Yeah. Right? he was a mess. Uh, that was remember uh, yeah. Tyson Chandler said that like he had no idea they drafted Devin Booker and remember they had like no idea that he was good and they didn't know who he yeah. was or yeah. what he yeah. was. So <clears throat> he was a uh, the Mercury, which is the WNBA team, had Diana Taurasi, who was like one of the best players ever. Sarver really wanted McDonough to like find the goat, like he wanted the Suns to get their goat, like Taurasi. So he put a literal goat in McDonough's office as a metaphor and the goat shit all over the office. <laughs> I like that. I'll get that okay. aside. I'm not tripping off I'm not tripping off that. Like I want you to see goat's my vision, gonna go. Yeah, yeah. goat's gonna go. Uh, he he pants the twenty five year old uh account executive during the ALS ice bucket challenge in front of more than sixty employees. Guy or girl? Guy, Guy? Uh, that's crazy. That's three. Good question. So the last, the, the last one has, yeah, if you pant, you pants a woman, like that's, yeah, crazy. that's crazy. Yeah. You got it. Uh, so that's three. So this last one has to be number two. Yeah. Hopefully it's good. Uh, it's just weird again. I mean, I think, uh, four former employees said that in several all staff, staff meet, all staff meetings, Sarver claimed that he needed to wear Magnum <laughs> or extra large condoms in just a team meeting. Clown. Clown. <laughs> Oh, man.